Hi, San Antonio, and welcome to Park Bench. I'm your host, Michelle Martinez. Things are getting back to normal. Our pools are open, we have some great summer programming, and parks have everything you need to enjoy the outdoors. We have a great show for you, so let's get started. On this episode of Park Bench, get a first look at some exciting trail and park projects happening across the city. Beat the heat this summer and cool off at a swimming pool near you. And we're exploring wildlife. We even spotted a few animals crossing the land bridge, so keep an eye out for those. All this and more, let's get started. Pools are open this summer to keep you cool. We met up with Veronica Rodriguez from our aquatics division to learn more. Pool season is starting up again. I'm super excited. My staff is super excited to see everyone come out and visit our outdoor pools this summer. In June, we will have a varied schedule. Four will be open on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays um, for after school swim from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And those pools are Lady Bird Johnson, Heritage, Southside Lions, and Woodlawn Pool. On the weekends, you can enjoy those pools plus San Pedro and Kennedy Pool. Saturday, July 2nd, we will be opening various pools and all of them are gonna be open all summer long. And we know that it's been a while, so just a reminder, remember when you come out and visit our outdoor pools, any kids that are not potty trained must wear a swim diaper. Children 10 years and younger must be accompanied by an adult in the water. Our goggles, you are able to wear them, but don't bring that nose piece. And then also remember, no food or drinks. You can enjoy your picnics in our beautiful parks, but not in our pool. Water and fruit are allowed inside our pool. After we open up, we will be offering swim lessons for ages 6 to 12, beginner classes level 1 and 2 throughout the regular pool season. Registration for our swim lessons is going to be Saturday, June 19th online at saparksandrec.com at 9 a.m. Please visit the website for a full list of pools where we will be teaching our swim lessons. And as always, our swim lessons are free. If you're looking for a cool summer job, we still are hiring lifeguards. And during the month of June, we will be offering lifeguard certification classes. So my favorite part about being the lifeguard is working with the community and the ability to make some of your best friends for life. I love being a lifeguard because I'm constantly outdoors and I just love being around the pool. My favorite reason for being a lifeguard is learning a lifelong life-saving skill. It's also a really good job if you're in school, so when you're transitioning between the summer back to fall classes, um, it's really good to earn extra money so that that way you can help pay for like books and other stuff like that. I started when I was in high school. Uh, my swim coach recommended it to me, and I loved it ever since. Every year I can't wait to come back. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Thanks to a partnership with the UT Health Science Center at San Antonio, there are two sunscreen stations located at Elmendorf Lake Park and the mainland trailhead just off the Leon Creek Greenway. This partnership ensures that our San Antonio community is aware of the importance of wearing sunscreen when enduring outdoor activities. Studies show that one in five Americans will develop skin cancer in their lifetime, but much of this is preventable. Sunscreen is one of the main forms of protection people can use to shield themselves from the sun's harmful rays. Here are a few simple tips on how to properly use sunscreen to get the maximum benefits. Experts recommend applying about two tablespoons of sunscreen to the face and body. If you are just applying to the face, then a nickel-sized amount should suffice. Reapply sunscreen every two hours when outdoors. Up to 80% of UV rays are still passable through the clouds, so be sure to wear sunscreen even on overcast days. For more tips, scan the QR code at the sunscreen station by raising your cell phone camera and following the link. You'll be provided with more information, and you can even fill out a survey to give feedback. Be on the lookout for more sunscreen stations popping up at a park or trail near you. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Up next, we're talking to Brandon Ross at Eisenhower Park about the exciting new connection between the Salado Creek Greenway and the Leon Creek Greenway. We just completed four miles of Salado Creek Greenway from 1604 all the way uh, up near the Rogers Ranch neighborhood. It goes by the Medicine Wall 
and it comes along the border of Camp Bullis over here to the Eisenhower Trailhead. And all of this is new with that. Um, it was built with that. And the final piece of the connection between Leon Creek and Salado Creek will be over here uh, off to your right, where we're going to be connecting another two miles from the Eisenhower Trailhead down to the rim where the trail currently ends. And so once that's completed, we're going to have approximately 40 miles connected between Salado and Leon. And so that's a more than a marathon if you're jogging and it's still a really good bike ride. But this is a huge one because again, these are two systems that are already com combined together. They're already about 35 to 37 miles. And so when we make this last connection, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna basically link Salado and Leon together. It's the culmination of years and years and years of work. And I think people will really appreciate having this and being able to go from one system to the other but we're hoping to be able to get that open in time for everybody to enjoy it later this summer or early fall. We're hoping that people will get out, but when they do, of course, we have some reminders. We wanna make sure that people bring water because during the summer, especially, it's very, very hot. Take your sunscreen, make sure that you've got a charged cell phone and all those kinds of safety related things that we want people to keep in mind as they come out to enjoy the greenways. Also, just remember just some basic etiquette. Uh, if you're traveling slower than the people coming behind you, make sure and stay to the right so they can get around you. And by all means, bicyclists, I'm talking to you, try to watch the speed, watch out for others, let everybody kind of play, play nicely in the same space. It's a multi-use trail. We want to accommodate for everybody. One other thing that I would mention is there is no such thing as a poop ferry. So we want to make sure that if you, if you bring your pets, you know, they're going to poop around the trail, that you're picking it up and you're taking the bag from that location to a trash can near you. So something else that we're trying to do recently is increase the number of pollinator gardens that we have in San Antonio, specifically on the greenways. A few years ago, we started doing more low impact development parking that would allow for better water quality as runoff enters the creeks. Uh, but we're also now starting to do more wildflower seeding and things that will be attracting those pollinators, those uh, butterflies and, and insects that will pollinate our environment and continue to bring our environment to more of a natural, beautiful state. We have taken the Monarch Pledge in San Antonio, and so we're trying to continue to grow the number of butterfly gardens and pollinator gardens we have within the city. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Thank you, Kat. My name is Maurice Bass. I am your fitness coach for today. Welcome to Home Bodies, a weekly segment for you to enjoy and work out at home. Today, we're doing a full body kickboxing workout. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be intense, but you know what? We got this. Let's see the workout. Today's call, workout's called Let's Kick It. It's gonna be AMRAP. If the term for AMRAP is as many rounds as possible. We have two 10 minute AMRAPs with a five minute, five minute break between them. Don't forget, take those breaks, very important. We have six exercises. Each exercise we'll do it 10 times before we move on to the next one. Once you finish the last exercise, that one will complete one round, remember. We try and get as many rounds as possible in 10 minutes. Last thing, wherever you left off on the first AMRAP exercise, that's when you start your second AMRAP exercise. For instance, you left off high knees, forward punches. When we start your second AMRAP, you start off with there. Real simple, all right, let's get it done. Let's get it done now. Pick up your knees as quickly as you can. As you punch forward, extend your punches as far as you can. Modification, just slow the movement down on your high knees and forward punches. Use the same method of movement for high knees in previous exercise. Overhead punches should be straight up towards the ceiling. Modification, slow the tempo down to your speed. Bend your knees and drop down until your legs make a 90 degree angle. Stand back up and kick your leg forward as far as you can. Modification, use a chair for support when squatting. Remember, slow your movement down on your forward kicks. We're still using the same method for squats in the previous exercise. This time when you stand back up, you will be kicking out to the sides. 
modification, use a chair for support. Lie face down with leg extended, elbows bent and directly under your shoulder. Place your feet apart and tucking your toes in while lifting your body from the ground. Raise your arm and punch forward. Modification, use your knees for support. Sit in the sit up position while alternating punches across your body. Modification, use the same method for punching, but this time you're in a crunch position. Woo, that was intense. My first time I've done, I'm in my five minute break, need a water break. Hey, all right, water break, thank you, appreciate it. That's good. Make sure you drink that water, it's very important. We got the last 10 minute arm wrap. Make sure you focus, do it right, all right? Until then, I hope you enjoy the home body's workout. See you next week. Thank you. Today we're back at the Robert L. Tobin Land Bridge talking wildlife with Casey Cohen. Let's hear what she had to say. One exciting new feature of San Antonio is the Robert L. B. Tobin Land Bridge. It connects both sides of Hardberger Park over Wurzbach Parkway, and it's one of only two multi-use land bridges in the whole world. So wildlife have four main necessities for life, that's food, water, shelter, and space. And with increased urbanization, reaching those necessities becomes harder and harder. So having these wildlife corridors like the land bridge, greenways, and greenbelts makes it easier for animals to reach those necessities. Some interesting animals that we've already captured on photo on the land bridge are coyote, white-tailed deer, possum, and cottontail rabbit. Plants and wildlife provide ecosystem services from the food that we eat to the air that we breathe, so it's important for us to protect those spaces. Because of human habitation and increased separation of those natural areas, animals have learned to adapt to humans and to meet those needs. So you might see a deer eating supplemented food in someone's yard like corn or even pet food. You might see a raccoon eating pet food on someone's backyard. Uh, you might see a snake slithering along a fence or even like a rodent in your garage. And while those activities do meet those main needs, they're not always the best option for wildlife. Of all else, supplemental feeding is probably the most upsetting to an ecosystem. When an animal gets used to being fed by a human, it stops feeding on natural resources like plants and it can change the plant and animal composition in an ecosystem. Moreover, when you feed wildlife, you artificially increase the population and you bring it to a point at which the ecosystem is not able to carry it anymore. You have way too many animals and not enough food, water, shelter, and space. If you do encounter wildlife in a natural area or around your home, the best thing you can do is turn and walk away. Never approach or touch wildlife. If you find a sick or injured animal, you can contact your local wildlife rehabilitator like Southern Wildlife Rescue and Rehab. But if you feel you're in immediate danger, you should definitely seek shelter and call 911. So what you can do for wildlife at your home, instead of supplementing non-natural food, is planting native vegetation. You can do that in your yard or even in pots on your patio. Not only does this vegetation provide food, but it can create space, water, and shelter for small animals like insects, spiders, lizards, and even birds. It also creates an opportunity for wildlife watching from the comfort of your home. Outside of your home, you can volunteer to pick up trash in your local parks or greenways. And there are even opportunities within parks to remove native vegetation and be involved in habitat restoration. For more information on volunteer opportunities, contact Meredith Tilly. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Hi friends, I'm Betty, and welcome back to Little Discoveries, where we do and make fun things for families with little ones. Today, we will be discovering our colors using a simple activity of color sorting. For today's activity, we will be using our visual and thinking skills to figure out what color goes where. So that means we're using our eyes and our brains. Let's have some fun. For this activity, you will need a couple of things. Paper plates, plastic tweezers, but if you don't have them, plastic spoons, stickers, a big container, and you'll see why and then a bunch of colorful things that you can just find at home. 
The reason why you need a big container is because you're gonna take all the things that you collected and mix them all together. Now that it's all mixed together, we can set this aside. And now it's time for you to put your stickers on your plate, like this. Each plate will have a specific color for the sorting. And now it's time to color sort. So little ones can use the plastic spoons to scoop something out like this and then figure out which plate it belongs to. In sorting objects, little ones will separate them according to similarities and differences. Classifying and sorting activities help little ones to develop a range of thinking skills and build the foundations for later problem solving skills. So these essential skills are necessary for your little ones to develop and use as they grow. And that's it. I hope you had a lot of fun color sorting with me today. See you next time on Little Discoveries. Bye. The San Antonio Parks and Recreation Summer Youth Program is happening all summer long. Starting in June through August, youth ages 6 to 14 will enjoy a variety of activities at locations across the city. Activities include arts, crafts, sports, fitness, nutrition, as well as math and science enrichment activities. And a free lunch and snack are included too. Summer is looking up and youth in our city have a lot to look forward to. Visit saparksandrec.com to learn more. Get ready to explore your city parks with three things to try this summer. Keep cool while working out. Check out an Aqua Zumba class. Working out doesn't have to feel like a workout, if you're having fun. If that's what you're looking for, Aqua Zumba is back. And be sure to check out all the other Fitness in the Park classes to stay fit this summer. Find the complete schedule at saparksandrec.com. July is National Parks and Recreation Month, and this year's theme is Our Park and Recreation Story. Stay tuned as we highlight how San Antonio is strong, vibrant, and resilient because of the parks, the programming, the amenities, and the people. Follow along using hashtag Our Park and Rec Story. Don't let the summer end without making time for family and friends. Head to your favorite park, or better yet, explore a new one. There are over 250 parks to choose from. Pack up a picnic, take a walk, take the kids to the playground. The options are endless. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Welcome back to Game On. My name is Alyssa and today we're learning two stack attack challenges that you can do at home using two different colored cups and cardstock. Are you up for the challenge? Game on. Moving on up. In this game, players should have at least 19 red cups and one green cup. Players will start with the cup stacked upside down with the green cup on top. When instructed to go, players will grab the cups and begin moving them one at a time from the top to the bottom. Grab the top cup with one hand, and with the same hand, move it to the bottom of the stack. Then, with the other hand, grab the next cup and do the same thing. Continue moving the cups one at a time with alternating hands until the green cup is once again at the bottom of the stack. The first player to accomplish this is the winner. Swipe Stack In this challenge, players will stack four cups on top of each other, forming a tower with cardstock slips in between each cup. Then, starting from the top, try to yank each paper without the cup falling and destroying your tower. The cup has to fall on another cup until all cups have collapsed into a stack. The first player to land their stack wins!
hope you liked today's game. Make sure you like and share with your friends. We'll see you next time. Bye. We're here at San Pedro Springs Park talking to Sandy Jenkins about the new green space. We're also talking to her about new amenities at Dawson Park and the new Shadwell Park. Take it away, Sandy. Here at San Pedro Park, we're still under construction and uh, just wanted you to know that the parking lot has half gone away. We still have great parking here for the library and we're gonna have a perimeter trail with lighting that's going to go throughout the park. And if you used to park here to be able to go to the pool, now you're just gonna need to go up by McFarland Tennis Center and to be able to park there. But there's great things happening at San Pedro Springs Park. We're restoring a lot of the green space back into the park. So the baseball fields have gone away. A lot of the parking is going to become green space. We'll have some nice monuments. Lighting is gonna be very, very important uh, in this part of the park. So it's gonna be really nice to come out to the park. You can enjoy the pool, you bring your dog, bring your families, bring a kite, throw a frisbee, throw a ball, because the open space will be amazing here at San Pedro Springs Park. Everything's gonna be ready late summer, so just in time for the nice fall weather to come out, take a walk, and enjoy the park. One of our newest parks is Shadwell Park. Shadwell is actually at Shadwell and Zachary Street, located in Council District 7. Used to be just a drainage project. Now there's a great playground. There's a place for you to sit and watch your children play. New trees, just areas pe that people can recreate there at Shadwell Park. It's wonderful. At Robert Dawson Park, right on East Commerce, we have a brand new basketball court cover, new lighting throughout the park, picnic pads, and then at the community center, we have a brand new community lab that has computers, Wi-Fi, wonderful items, all provided by the San Antonio Spurs. We love our Spurs. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. And that's our show. As you can see, the Parks and Recreation Department has something for everyone. We'll see you out in the parks this summer.